You're listening to SM Media, the number one place for exclusive content. Hi everyone and welcome to this week's episode of the Scottish <coughs> Football Show right here on SM Media. I'm Scott McPidley, be your host as always. I'm joined by a rather down in the dumps, Wilson. Wilson, how are we this fine weekend? It's been it's been, it's been nothing short of terrible to be honest. I'm 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 disappointed, disappointed in what's went on this weekend, but we'll talk about it later in the show. Maybe Stuart Mark can cheer me up now. We've got rid of Mark and Rory for a wee spell. <laughs> Shankers is a wall again. Enjoying the celebrations, quite rightly so. Rory, we're hoping to join later on in the show. Mark Whelan's filling in. Mark, how are you? Oh, over the moon. Absolutely buzzing. It's just, uh, it's no set in yet at all. It's I feel like a big kid at Christmas. It's great. Brilliant. We're joined by a special guest as well. We're joined by the former heir, St. Marin and Horrorford striker, Stuart Keane. Stuart, it's a pleasure to welcome you on to the show. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be on. How have you been? Good, I know bad. It's been a tough time, obviously, it's been a tough time for everybody. So it has been um, getting there, quasi getting slow link, can you, we're all can you start to see the other side of it. So hopefully we'll, we'll go right. Definitely couldn't agree more. We'll start with some kind of sad news we heard over the week before we touch on the results. We, Ian St. John sadly passed away, <clears throat> legend of the Scottish game, obviously, uh, played for Motherwell, played for Liverpool, also a Scotland legend. Wilson, just what was your memories of Ian St John? Obviously, you grew up in the Saints and Graves era. Oh, well, that's that's what that's what that's what it was. It was Saturday morning um, television now and again because because he was you know that good bit older than me. Obviously, um, I didn't. I always the way the program kind of worked. It was if Ian St John was the presenter and Jimmy Greaves was the ex pro. Now you'd heard of Jimmy Greaves because. England won the World Cup in 66 and he was injured, so Jeff Hurst played, etc. in the next history. Um, I didn't really know that Ian St. John actually played, um, to be honest, because the, the, the kind of famous Liverpool teams that I grew up with, you know, he was he was long gone by then. It wasn't until, you know, later on when St. Greaves had probably finished that I actually realised that he played with Motherwell and Liverpool. And um, I just <laughs> I thought it was a television presenter at first, but that was a great show. And but we're absolutely ruined now in terms of television with football shows and social media shows and all these kind of things. But then, you know, it was grandstand and Saint and Greavesy. That 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 was your that was your football. So uh, it's always sad. And I know Jimmy Greaves isn't the greatest of health either. Um, but you know that was a funny show and it kind of brought the likes of on of if you guys remember fantasy football with Frank Skinner and David Baddiel. You know, yeah. Saint and Greavesy was the kind of pre for for the guys as well. So oh, it's always sad news. Always sad. Definitely. Stuart, you had a, a wee story as well about meeting in St John. Other than that, it's a, you told us it off air, but it's a brilliant story. <laughs> I think it was, um, it, was a, it was a primary school at the time. So it was in, um, back then, I mean, we were playing, it was a kind of Scottish Cup final. You go through different stages, the local areas, and then you go through and go through. And you end up, it was, we played the semi final outside Ibrox. So we did. And then we got, you played the final, you played the final at half time on the pitch. So it was him. It was giving out the trophies after it. That was the time I met him. I but it's, it's sad news. Definitely. So, but I, it was. It was nice to meet him. Yeah, I've I've actually one of the first lot of biographies I read was Ian St John's book, and it was again it kind of I think it's still in that cupboard actually. It's a great great read as well. It kind of let you into the how good he was as a player. We'll move on. We'll touch on the the results over the weekend. There's only one place to start, and. After 10 years, Rangers are the champions for the 55th time. Look at the face in Mark Wilson there <laughs> with that statement. <laughs> Mark, we've been we've been through it all with Rangers fans. I'm not gonna lie, it's uh, as a and best. you deserved that. And you deserved that, let's be honest. Let's <laughs> <laughs> but what a moment, what a day, what it's just a, an amazing journey finally concluded with uh, the 55th title. Mark, just sum up how you're feeling. Well, I'm not shocked, um, as I've been very, very vocal on this show about, I think you could have got the 55 banners out after that first Old Firm game in October at Parkhead. Um, what I would say is, though, and I, and I know we've had banter on social media on this show, etc. the league table doesn't lie, and the best team wins a league, and 
for, for this season. And, it was, and actually, it brought me on. I was listening to Open All Mics yesterday in BBC Scotland, and it was Derek Ferguson made a good point. He, he asked, I think he asked Stuart McCall, who's been your player of the season. And you know, now, mate, I think you could, you could actually hear all the guys in Open All Mics starting to think about it. And, you know, you're, look, you're looking at how well Rangers have done, not conceded goals, but Alan McGregor could have been your player of the season. You know, because when a save's been made, or needed to be made, he's made it. Then you had the, we had the, well, they had the discussion about Tavernier because obviously his goals and assists count. Then I think it was the Leanne Crichton brought up, well, what about Goldson, who's really not put a foot wrong and played the last, I think he's played every minute of every game this season. Um, somebody mentioned Kent, which... I, I, then, then I turned the radio off when somebody mentions him, to be honest. <laughs> um, one good game in 15. <laughs> uh, but and, and that's and that's when you know a team's done really well. And it's not just a case of... I mean, let's be honest, every team in Scotland's on their knees. There's, there's no doubt in that. But they've done as well as they have done the league in Europe as well. And, that, and that's when you know it's, 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 not, it's not a fluke. They're what, 20 points clear or whatever it is, and they're just, can I get a wee buzz? Ran over St. Mullen. It could have been anything yesterday after they got those two goals. Um, and as I say, the, the best team by, by a mile this year has been Rangers, and, and, and they've won the league at a canter. Definitely. Which is disappointing, to be honest with that. Anyway. Well, <laughs> Although the, so the one thing I would say, Scott, sorry, just to, the one thing I would say, which, and folk will say, oh, he's this and he's that because it's Rangers, the reason I didn't want Rangers to win the league, and this is the truth, right? The last time Rangers stopped 10 in a row was 1974, right? And Kelly finished 12th that season as well. So I hope <laughs> that's not, I'm hoping that's not an omen um, for, for, for the rest of this season. So that's why I was quite set against Rangers winning the league. Cleland, sum up how you're feeling. This is a, a show where we're just, everybody's going to get a chance and how, say how much they... Rangers deserve it, and nobody will be more willing to say that more than me. But Cleland, how are you feeling? Just over the moon, mate. Honestly, it's it's been ten years far too long, and obviously we've been for going for the lowest point, third division, getting put down there. Like the journey's been nuts. Can uh, ten years ago we've been put down, we've been put down. Like so, we've had Kachinia and stuff like pure left fielder, absolutely nobody has ever heard of. Integrate Murray, then Gerard, like. I do wrong wrong off who come for the under twenty threes for Liverpool straight into Rangers. But honestly, it's just I don't even have any words for it to explain it. It's just ten years of absolute agony coming winning the old firm twenty nineteen and then coming into like obviously basically made a balls here in the January to the bite a stinker. And then just honestly, I mean it's just lost for words. I mean, like say time, the thing the lowest point for me was like throughout the journey and that was I think Michael Chopra made his debut for Alawa and I think we drew two each at home and a Wednesday night it was either Tuesday or Wednesday night and I thought what am I doing here like honestly remember the, like, game, remember the game at Hearts remember the game against Hearts oh, I don't even go there mate. remember that, 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 was, that was mental that was a write off honestly see when you look back at the absolute carry on we went through till like now it just doesn't it's honestly mate it's just lost for words it's it, it's not sunk in yet I think I'll not sink into after the old firm I don't think um Obviously, Wilson would love to hear that, but it's just, um, honestly, lost for words, mate. Honestly, lost for words. Just, it's no stank in yet. Until I see Rangers actually lift the trophy in the final day of the season, that's when you realise, like, how, like, what we've came through. I know FD is our best support in the world now, blah, 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 and it's, like, bragging rights to get to that title, but, um, like, his face is tripping him up. <laughs> um, that's true, but, mate, like, Best support in the world? Is that what you said there? Hands down easy. I well, well, well I'm, I'm, gl- I'm glad. I'm glad. Then they, they, they followed the restriction rules and didn't go partying yesterday. Paul, Paul Kettle and Black, again. Paul my Kettle. best fans in the world, right enough. Paul Kettle Black, you've done his wheel, but honestly, me as as you asked, the, like, I just say the question is just it's lost for words. It's over the moon. It's no sank in yet, but it's um, to still be ten and all as well, considering the season. We've always say, oh, this is going to be the season. This is the season. But as Gerard said, it takes three, two, three years to rebuild the squad, giving us sorted for it, and then actually go and, go and do it unbeaten as well so far. And unbeaten in Europe as well is such an achievement. So it's just, it's going to be a special season regardless. I think now there's the likes of the Scottish Cup coming back. Could Rangers push on for Europa League? None of us really play for. They've won the league. Obviously, they want to go for the unbeaten. 
could Rangers push on if the luck of the draw is kind to them? Could Rangers push on and go for Europa League? It's yeah. it's not a bad shout, but two of the big favourites are out. There's a Napoli and Leverkusen, so they're going in really to to I don't I don't fear Andy at home, regardless with Rangers. So they could why not? There's nothing else to play for. Go for it. Stuart, how much credit does Stephen Gerrard deserve, and how? What's your thoughts as well? Obviously, there's a lot to get through, but brilliant for Gerrard and brilliant for the Rangers. How, what's, your, what's your thoughts? It's, it's been a tough 10 years. It's been hard. He's came in. I think he set his story to do the job he's, he's done. It. But the big thing for me is it's the squad he's built. I mean, mm-hmm. see, you're, see if you're, he's losing players with injuries, but the boys he's bringing in are fit and staying and performing at the highest level. And that's at every level. Do you know what I mean? Even in Europa League and things. It's just, and what he's done has been exceptional. It's been, it has been a tough few years. It's been brilliant. And it's the same. It's, that would be no feel right to, to see them with the trophy, to be fair to you. I think that would be the, the big thing for them. Definitely. It's just, it's what it's, I've been, I've been a season day older since 2003. I've seen all the good things and I've seen the bad things. And for us, it's it's unbelievable. I can't, it's, it's hard to find words. Well, just covered everything I wanted to say. It's just, it's, the first thing I'd done today was phone my dad and just kind of brought it home, just how special it was, sharing it with him. And it's just unbelievable. But we'll we'll bring Walsh. So, see, just just interrupting that note, there's nothing. Every time you mention your father, right? I don't know if it, Wilson probably heard this story before. That story about the progress Nidalecon game at home is your father <laughs> in the motor. Wilson, you heard this? We're in I the car. So, to, no, this honestly, this I've mentioned it the first time I come on here. We went up to the Nidalecon game in the motor. Scott's dad's like, oh, fancy the day, anyway. Eight or nine, nothing the day. No. <laughs> if it's a one nil, Kenny Miller, I don't think he even scores his own goal. And it's probably the worst game I've ever seen in my life. And big, big Scott's dad decided to put minus, oh, God knows what he put uh, on minus that. Day. Six, uh, minus on. six or seven or eight. I don't know what it was, but he was expecting an eight or nine, nine. Coutinho's first game at Ibrox. And it was probably the worst I've ever seen Rangers play. I, honestly, that, that's, that was my downfall. That was why I was just like, what am I watching here? But that was painful, Scott. You know that for a uh, But it's those days you think of when you think of that. You think how bad it's been. And we're witnessing something special here. Stephen Gerrard as well. What a, what a man to get. What an achievement for Gerrard to do this in three seasons. I know it's, he completed his job. It's an unbelievable achievement. I just want to say as well. But let's bring Wilson down to earth with the result at Dingwall yesterday. Ross County 3, Kilmarnock 2. Kyle Lafferty scored 2, but it wasn't enough. What's your thoughts, Wilson? Are you already? Well, I'd, 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 I'd managed. I'd managed to get uh, Tommy Wright to pin Daryl Meggett's comments up in the dressing room <laughs> before the game, um, and obviously, I, I, honestly, I mean, I, I must admit, I'm slightly worried now. Um, I didn't. I didn't think we'd go there and lose. You know, if we could get a draw there, the positive you can take is that Lafferty's off the map now, and as I say, I think. By the looks of it, single-handedly, he could possibly um, score the goals. It could possibly keep us up, especially when it splits into um, the bottom six. But I also must, and I don't know if you watched the highlights, guys, um, but I looked um, at the highlights and, you know, wondered, did Don Robertson think Kyle still had his Rangers strip on by not sending him off for a, a punch in the face? You know, I think he must have thought he was still playing with Rangers there not to send him off. And that's, Again, a great goal scorer. He's, he's done that at different clubs. But see, see, and Stuart will be able to tell you this as well. See, when you're in a battle like that, discipline is going to be massive. You know, and if you are, probably looks like he's your best player at the moment, even after two, or, two only, or three games. He's only threat, to be honest. If he, if he goes into the first game, let's just say, for example, it's against Hamilton Aki, he gets sent off and subsequently misses two bottom six games. Kilmarnock have nothing else. Mm-hmm. Up front, absolutely yeah. nothing, and and that's and that's the worry. It's leaving um, up front as well. I think it's like there's no threat coming from midfield or anything. But, like I, I, but again, I don't I don't get why Malumbu's not playing every game, and I don't get why Chris Buck's not playing every game. Now, hindsight's a wonderful thing, you know, because you look at the guys that start. Just the Buck didn't start, Malumbu didn't start, and you're looking, you know, now who's going to play a uh, right back? You know, Ross Mullen gets sent off yesterday for mouth and off and. You know, and it's it's all these wee bits of the jigsaw that just add up, and it's it has been shambolic this year, you know, um, and it's as I say, 
two weeks now in the next game, I think it's against Motherwell, um, and it gives Tommy Wright a wee bit more time in the training ground. But the, the, the problem is, I mean, as I say, the Kelly fans on social media last night were apoplectic. They only really were. Um, and it, it, as I say, the the problem is, is the quality in the squad just now? Because we can't bring anyone in. Mm-hmm. The goalkeeping situation has been an embarrassment all season. Um and, and that's the worry. And I know Stuart, as a big air man, is absolutely delighted with the situation, you know. Because um, he'll get a gig at Air TV next year when the big derbies are on. Um, <laughs> but but I, st- I, still, I still genuinely think, um, I still honestly think that Ross County and Hamilton are worse than Kumar. I, I, I genuinely do. Um, as I say, I don't see Hamilton has a, having this number nine that's going to score them goals or Ross County, where it's Kelly do now have Kyle Laffer and he's off the mark. So I think he'll do what Kevin Kyle did a few years ago and and and, and keep his and, I, and and to be honest, I wouldn't be and I know I'm not sounding aloof or arrogant or anything. I wouldn't be that worried if we finished eleventh because I think we're far better than all the teams probably in that first division out with now on paper, Hart's probably a better team, but um, but they'll win that league, so I would be I would be fairly confident if they finish eleventh of staying up anyway. So you going back to your point, Wilson, about like like Burke not playing. Would you not think like Burke's a man to give Laffer to the service? That's what I would think straight away. Well, well, like, Chris Burke's been our best player this season. I would, like um, looking back for last season, I'd, like Burke was putting the balls in the box left, right, and centre last year. Like that's the man you want in the box to put in the net. You'd, you'd want like Burke to put the service in. Absolutely. Now again, and, that, and that's that that's that was for me. Now Chris Potts a quality player, but that's for me when we were heavy relying on a thirty-eight year old guy. Is that you what know? he is? Thirty-eight. I think we're 37, 38, You know, I think he must be that age. And and that was the kind of worry. But he, he, he was honestly, he's been outstanding for Coma. What a sign that's been. Um, and then, and I know some games, but Chris Potts can battle as well. Yesterday would have been a battle. So Tommy Wright's maybe picked the team in case this is going to be, you know. 100 mile an hour, blah, blah, blah. But Chris, Chris Burke, as you say, has that quality in delivery. He got balls in the box. It's what Lafferty's, you know, food and drink for them. Um, so, as I say, it's, 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 it, was, it was worrying yesterday in terms of the result. And But again, Lafferty can, you know, score as many goals as you like, but if he can't keep them out at the other end, you know, I that, thought as well, like, you've got to, like, like, look at the experience Malumbu brings as well, like, like playing the Premier League. I think, like, that's a like, first name of the the team sheet, John. I would personally midfield like you think the experience he's played at the level. Sorry, the experience he brings, you'd expect him to be like straight in there. Do you know what I, I, mean? I don't think he's I, some, I, some, I sometimes think though that the shape doesn't suit him. Aye. because if if he if he's playing that number ten well in front of the two centre midfielders, he's got Kyle Laffer or a striker to slip the ball through to. Because the two the, the two wide players are, are wide players. Aye. But in the know? same time, you've got to accommodate. The foot, like the shape for him. Do you know what I mean you've got to like focus the team running about him? Like, a guy of that stature that's been there, done it. Do you know what I mean he's played at the highest level, like in the Premier League, where you could say that. But you've got to what the shape run about him. I would personally. I mean, I, I, I would as well. I mean, he's, he's he's a talent, but again, I think a lot of the games now are going to be battle. So Tish Ball will play and Rory McKenzie, guys at work hard and don't, can I don't let you down, but maybe no got the quality as Malumbu, but. As I say, it's, it's, it's going to be a big, a big, a big six weeks, and then we'll have to prepare for the Scottish Cup final. So it'll be, it'll be an interesting end to the season for Kelly. Don't worry about that. Sure, what's your thoughts as well? Do you worry for Wilson's Kilmarnock? After yesterday, I mean, I watched the thing of the game yesterday, and you sit and look, you look around the bottom. The, the, I think every team in the bottom six, Bar Kilmarnock picked up points this weekend, mm-hmm. and that's a bit. Of, that, that must be a bit, of, a bit, a bit of a punch for them. Do you know what I mean? So, but. You look at Yogi, Yogi set up there and that's just the way Yogi sets his teams up and I think it's a tough place to go. But I think it'll be, it'll be tough for them. I think be so, to sorry, sorry to interrupt, Stuart. I mean, ne- next Saturday, Hamilton and Ross County play their games in hand. Now, Hamilton's away at Livingston, which definitely could pick something up there. Aye. And Ross County's home to Hibs. So it's not as if they're playing Celtic and Rangers, no. you know, with, with these extra games. And and again, if they if they win those games in hand, then I think the gap between Ross County and come out seven points or something, you know. So um, when, when you're doing that stuff, I hate the line of that, and it's like the same every day about you picking up points and you're not picking up points. But you hope the likes of Kyle Lafferty coming in, playing experience here, and there's plenty of experience in that changing room to, to get them out of it. 
It's just whether or not they'll get the time. Rory Roy is with us now. Rory, how are we? Yes, yeah, not too bad, Scott. How's yourself? Brilliant. Brilliant. Rangers are champions. Former Rangers player, how are you feeling? Yeah. Aye, good. Brilliant. Um, long time coming. Well deserved. Um, over the course of the season, by far and away the best team in the country. And it was just a matter of time. Um, when I left, obviously, it was six months before they were relegated to the second division. So in terms of my, my own personal time scale, that feels like forever ago. So to finally see them champions again, like I said, I think especially the way they the way they got over the line and the way they did it, and they're still not beating in the league this season, they're worthy, worthy champions. Definitely, couldn't agree more. Well, also, well, we've also touched on the Kilmarnock game as well. Do you now worry for Kilmarnock? I, of course, uh, very fond of Kilmarnock. It's a club I want to see stay up. Um, I still think I still think they'll have enough. I think Wilson's touched on it over the last few weeks on the show. He's he bagged a couple yesterday. It may be via the playoffs, but I think they will have enough. I think they've got a manager there who I might not be the most exciting guy in the world to come in. I think he will keep them up. I think Lafferty will score the goals to do it. Whether that's via the playoffs, possibly, but I don't think they'll finish bottom. Yeah, I, th- I, I do think they've got enough. I do think uh, Lafferty could be that man, but they, they need to get a run together quickly. We'll move on to Motherwell, a team that looks safe, Stuart. Motherwell won 3 1 against Livingston. Were you impressed with how Graham Alexander's come in and changed the, the fortunes of Motherwell? Ah, he's dead to come in. It looks if he's freshening things up. And Mother, uh, again, it's a big club. It's um, you just they look as if they're, they're going to be safe. It looks as if he's going to turn it around a bit for them. They were struggling before they come in. They're struggling to pick up the results and things. But aye, they look as if it looks as if he's going to turn things around there. Yeah, I think that as well. I do think Mother are getting there. Walsh and Jack Livingston's hitting a are kind of petering out a wee bit. They're, they're kind of poor run of form. How do you kind of think Livingston need to kind of change that quickly? I mean, they were, when David Martindale was appointed, you know, so, um, they were riding the crest of a wave. And, I mean, again, L- Livingston's, I, I think, targets from the start of the season will be to stay up, you know. And, and again, after you, and it's a wee bit like the Comart situation, when, you've, when you have a wee bit of success, then you, and your results then start to fall, or a wee bit of criticism starts to fly their way, you know. Um, but as I say, he's, he's, he's done well. He's, he's done well to keep them up. Um, but I said that they are faltering badly. Um, and I just wonder if he's maybe needing um, a wee bit more experience on the touchline to help him. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I love watching the games with, without crowds because you can hear, you know, managers shouting and the players are swearing and all that. I mean, if you watch the highlights in the sports scene last night, all you hear is that, you know, fella Martindale shouting and screaming at them. <laughs> you know, de- de- you know exactly what he's saying, but you can hear it's him and, you know, um, and I, again with the snowflake generation that a lot of these guys are playing, is is that working now? You know, it start it started well enough, but you know you you know the mark of a good team when you get a wee setback, can you can you bounce back? Um, yeah. So I I I, 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 I think Livingston will stay. I'll, I'll obviously stay up. And they'll stay probably bottom six. And but again, I think that's their target. I think just stay in the Premier League every year. I don't I don't. And they, they got to a cup final this year and deservedly so. Um, so I think he's probably kind of reached the dizzy heights, but it's how they react, you know, when the results start going and they come back down the way and have a big bit less success. So Yeah, definitely. Rory as well, St. Johnson got a win against Hibs. Wilson's, again, it's just <laughs> predictions-wise, Wilson's had a nightmare last weekend. <laughs> what do you think about St. Johnson as well? Obviously, they're, they're running high in the, after winning the League Cup. Do you think they are and could potentially make top six? I think we'll just miss out. I said that last week. I'll stick by what I said. Uh, they've come on strong and Callum Davidson has had a wee bit of a sticky start to his managerial career. But I think over time he's he's learned from his mistakes and he's embedded a, a winning mentality over the last kind of few weeks. I think everything's just kicking right for St. Johnson at the right time. If they couldn't at top six, it would be an unbelievable season. Everything considered. I think they will just miss out. Um, and over the course of your season, like I said, the, the league table doesn't lie. And if, if they are after 33 games sitting in the bottom six, that's where they deserve to be. But they've given themselves a chance. But I brilliant for them last week. They're, they're coming from strength to strength. They're, they're, they're the kind of they're riding the crest of the wave now, as, as, as Wilson said. I think Levy created the wave, and St Johnson joined them and pushed them off because um, they're absolutely flying at the moment. And they've they've won I don't know how many games, and they're unbeaten um, over the, over a stretch as well. And to beat Hibs yesterday is is a good feat as well because Hibs are and that's what twice in a month now they've they've beaten Hibs so big result for St Johnson they're doing really really well and 
Calvin Davidson's a, a lovely guy, so credit to him and, and, and well done to them. Yeah, definitely. Aberdeen now, Hamilton now. Who wants to take that game? Nebdy, oh, let's move on. <laughs> Honestly, I am so glad Danny McInnes never took that Rangers job years ago. <laughs> I'm so glad. No, they're, 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 honestly, you'll be next to go, I reckon. Because i seen a start the other week, it was like 500, games, uh, 500 minutes, sorry, they're not scored. Or something I can't remember, it was something along the lines, but they're, they're, they're poor, they're really they've, bad. They've scored, they've scored one goal in 10 games or something against Kilmarnock. <laughs> <laughs> That's a record. No, they're, uh, they're brutal to watch. We feel every time you, you, you watch them, they're just, they're hammer throwers. All the players are just hammer throwers, I reckon. They're just, I think it sums up the play Curtis main up top. He is brutal to watch. He is painful. But I don't, I don't think anybody else agrees, but he is brutal. Uh, we'll move on. A to... sign at the time. We'll move on to Dundee United at Celtic today. That also finished now, now, but there was a bit more to that game. Stuart, Celtic, obviously, uh, I draw the day, sealed Rangers as champions, but what do you think of the situation at Celtic? We ask everybody that's every week about the situation at Celtic, so what's your thoughts? I think it's, I think at the start of the season, I think Celtic just expect to turn up, win the league. So I did, to be honest with you, I think they thought it would be they'd win the league and they bother again. But obviously, as things go on, a few results turn against them. It's just there's something that things underlie, I don't know. And why they've no kind of... I feel as if they could have spent more money. I think they've just... Gerard's built the right way. And then, obviously, they, they lose the old firm games. And I think just turn. Change, obviously, changing them must be a bit sticky. But John Kennedy coming in, fans are obviously not going to be happy with that. But I think John, he'll steady the ship a bit and things like that. But it's just where I know... It's kind of an endless season with them, isn't it? It's a tough one. Uh, it's it's, it's going to be an, an interesting summer to see how they change it. Wilson, obviously Seagrest today with an amazing performance to keep Celtic. I thought Celtic played well at times, but are you on the phone to Dominic asking him to sign Seagrest? No, um, and I'll tell you why. Um, apart from he's, he's probably had... I mean, I, I saw a start in Sky Sports that he'd made 113 saves this year, but he, even though he made... You know, ten plus saves today. There was not one save you'd have thought, "Oh my God, that is worldy." You know, that's a great save. Everything Celtic had in the kind of box that was a wee bit kind of powder puff, um, and it didn't create you know unbelievable goal scoring chances. Um, so, as I say, I, I, I hate the fact that, and, and I'm sure Rangers have been guilty of it, uh, of it before in the past that they have one good game against the old firm, so they sign them. And then they play, you know, five or six games and they're absolutely howling. Um, and then they run out their four-year contract, you know, the old firm getting paid a fortune, taking the place of, you know, a young kid that's maybe better or a, another another signing. So, again, if Celtic want to improve, signing the likes of the Dundee United goalkeeper isn't going to, um, isn't, isn't going to improve them when they've let go of the likes of Craig Gordon, you know, to sign the Dundee United goalie. I'm, I'm not buying it. But on, on, the, on the Celtic thing, and I, I always ask all the, the pros that come on the show, against you, I'm not a, accusing or suggesting that you've been involved in anything like this, but do you do you watch these games and think that some of the players out there are not trying? I think it looks like that because the way, the way things are, the way things are going and that stuff, but there's no, there's no way any of the boys will cross the line and no try. Do you mean it's... I feel fit up that it's just no... You know, I mean, it's just no, it's not possible. But obviously, it's, they're going to be, they're going to be low in confidence and things like that. That's the other side of it. But there's no way they're going to close the line, no try. And it's, but I, I mean, I don't get, I'm not necessarily basing it on today. I mean, I thought for the first twenty minutes, I thought Ryan Christie was excellent, and then for the last ten minutes, yeah, and for the hour, for, for the hour in between, he could have been doing, you know, a fat Sam's with a couple of jars in his lunch, and then come back on because he did nothing for an hour. And, you, you know, you look at him, he's a quality player. You're looking for a wee bit more. S Scott Brown was really, really poor again today. Eduard is... I think I text Pikey about 80 minutes saying, I don't know why he said we don't chuck Eduard on for the last 10. <laughs> you know? And, again, I know players have different styles and things, but I, I brought this up, and, again, I keep referring back to it in October, where you're getting absolutely mullered by eight Rangers players because even Rangers fans admit the three forward players that day at the first off I'm going to turn up Kent, Morales and whoever it was so they were getting absolutely mullered and it took an hour before the referee had to book somebody and it was Glenn Kamara 
Now, if that's an old firm game, especially, and I'm not, again, I'm not saying you just go and clatter everybody and start fights and all that, but that that tells me there's a, there's a load of the boys out there not putting the effort in. And that's where I think that the mistake started at Celtic. When you look, not necessarily the result, because a, a, an old firm game regards the leagues and whoever's there can always go 50-50, can go either way. But that, that game, I just thought, there's a massive, massive problem at this club just now because it's about attitude and the way you respond to things and the, the way you look on the pitch. And and they trudged off that part of the day as if, well, don't care. You know, and you that, see maybe, that, maybe players want moves? Like, maybe they don't, they don't want to be there? Like, I absolutely, Matt, but I don't get why you would wait, uh, you know, till it's the most, or was going to be the most historic season uh, in Scottish football or at, Celtic, at a big club like Celtic. Now, it was always going to be difficult because Gerard was improving all the time. Yeah. But why why would you throw that away? Okay, because at, see, at the end of the day, Neil Lennon is going to be remembered for the man that failed to bring I 10 in a row. Right. Forget his 10 league titles as a player and his Scottish Cups and the quadruple treble. That is, that's newspaper wrap on the... Would you, say, would you say there's quite a lot of players in the club that know they're going to move on and they're just kind of there to the end of the season and just kind of like, like Edward, Edouard. Like, he's not, I, I, he's I not think the player this season. He's not the player get this up. season to where he was last season. I mean, yeah. I would have said overall... Ability, technical ability. Edward was a better player than Morelos. Morelos hasn't scored the goals as much as he did last year, but off the ball, his work rate's improved. Well, Morelos' his position I, changed as such. Edward just looks quite, you know, he looks quite lazy. He just doesn't want to be there. I can I get the impression with Edward, he was promised his big move last summer. Aye. And then Celtic have went, well, we've got an option on you. We want to keep you for 10. And he's went, oh, no, 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 no. Let me out of here. Because... Aye. I, and again, and I know it was they were going for this the, the fabled ten in a row, but surely it'd have been better to leave on the back of a quadruple treble than be part of this absolute shambolic season. And I don't even think if Celtic had won the League Cup and, and if they win the Scottish Cup, that Celtic fans will hold this season in any positive manner. No. You know, I don't now, think. I think now, when you look at it, the ten like obviously the nine in a row means absolutely nothing. Like, as you said, we're going back to that you're coming about Lennon. Like, Lennon will be known as the man that messed up 10 in a row. The nine in a row, doesn't he? Like, looking back in history, what they've what Celtic achieved is, is no right. It's mental. Like, what they have achieved, like, likes to win the trophies, quadruple trebles and that. But that goes for nothing. Like, it's out the window. Like, you it's know, for, it's, it's forgotten like, now. Would you see, like, now, likes of Edward McGregor, I don't know who else, maybe, like, Chris, Aya. maybe Forrest, Aya would move on to maybe... Forrest won't move. Forrest think? Won't. I, I, th- I think if, if you're going to cash in and you know totally restart, Celtic and the fans need to think, right, if we do this, it's maybe going to take two, three seasons. Yeah. You know? So if you if you get, if you you get sell Aya, Edward, Callum McGregor... Um, that they're they're the the three that will possibly generate you a, a decent amount of money for for Scottish football as such, um, but that is I mean that is in effect your three best players and the spine of your team. Brown's going to be finished. Um, the likes of Duffy and Laxal and all these guys will be away back to their parent clubs. Um, so, are Celtic going to give get a marquee manager that costs a lot of money and still have that amount of money to buy? Yeah. They're going to have to have at least, I think, at least two proper good signings. And if you're trying to sell, let, let's just say, for example, um, because it's on in the background there, Celtic try and sign Anthony Martial. Now, I know that's not going to happen, but I'm just, is he going to say, I absolutely, because you're going to have the likes of, no disrespect to these guys, David Turnbull and aye, aye, aye. Greg aye, Taylor like, playing? Unknowns to them, you know, pretty much. Whereas if you if you go if you go to a player of that caliber and say, well, we've still got Ayer, Callum McGregor, you'll play up front with Edward, a big player might think, mm, all right, you know, I'll come, I'll come there. Again, it's a wee bit like Jermaine Defoe. And I, I've said this for years to folk. That that's the type of player Celtic Rangers should look at. I, I said Aye, the, time, that, the, the connection between Defoe, the Defoe came to Rangers because Stephen Gerrard's there, right? But you look at you look at Celtic and you name those players. Now, you've picked a, a player in anti Martial who, by your own admission, is never coming to Celtic. No, it's just so he's on the telly. What, what is your definition of a big player that may come to Celtic that, that, that would be attracted by these types of players being there? Because Martial is obviously way off 
what that Aye, type of player what, would what be. Is, for, for example, if, if Celtic went just now and got Brendan Rodgers, right? Now, that, again, that's not going to happen, but if, then he would possibly be able to get you an Ineacho or a Jamie Vardy, someone that's maybe, you know, Jamie Vardy come to end his career, been there, seen it, done it in the Premiership, and maybe once another couple of seasons to play. The big name manager attracts a big name player. But Celtic aren't they going to get a ready-made big name manager it's just not going to happen the only reason it happened with Rodgers is because of the, his connection with Celtic in the first place Gerard is now fast becoming a big manager because he came in as an unknown Celtic are going to need to go down that route and hope that it works out for them as well they're not going to get a Martinez they're not going to get one of these guys it's just not going to happen well, so I, don't, going I don't to... think they'll get a Martinez but I think they'll get a, I think they'll get a tried and trusted manager on. I would yeah, generally I, love to see not, are you playing standard of Brendan Rodgers though no, 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 absolutely not. No, no, def- definitely not something like Brendan Rodgers. But I, th- mm. I think for C- Celtic need to get a big-name manager that big-name players will, or big-earning players will want to play for. I, dis- I disagree with Lennon as well. I think over the fullness of time, Lennon, Lennon's legacy will be looked upon fondly. I, I-, I think it's just a knee-jerk reaction to the yeah, last... It's like Rodgers when Rodgers left, yeah. Aye, the last week or so. You know, Walter Smith is arguably the greatest Rangers manager of all time. I know there's others out there who would disagree, but arguably the greatest manager, he messed up 10 in a row. People probably at that point in time have went where his legacy's gone. 20 years on, whatever it may be, you're looking back going, I know he came back for a second stint. Over the fullness of time, Lennon will be looked at as a club legend and his his achievements will go down in history and he will be fondly thought of by the Celtic fans. Yes, it's a black mark against his name. I do not believe in five years' time, he, six years' time, he will solely be remembered for the guy that messed it up. I don't, I don't believe that. I think he's done too much for the club. I, I mean, I, I can't disagree with all of that. How, however, I think that the likes of um, Walter Smith, when, when Walter Smith come out, well, at the time when, when he... Uh, the loss. He didn't mess up ten or they lost ten or whatever it was. He tried to stay loyal to your likes. So your aunts and McCoys. You never saw Walter Smith coming out after a, a defeat and saying that was Gaza's fault or that was Gorham's fault. Lennon was coming out and hanging these guys out to dry and fun out of everybody. And no, then the, 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 whole game Dubai, well. the whole Dubai thing made them fight with the fans. You know, so his, his legacy at the club's not just failing to 10. It's, it's the way he went on about it and after it. Dubai will be a fleeting memory in 10 years. When you look back in this season, Rangers stopped 10 in a row. Nobody's going to go, oh, by the way, mind that time they went to Dubai. 10 years' time, that's just not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Mark Cleland will be in Dubai in 50 years' time. He's full Rangers cat <laughs> on said, remember 2021 when Celtic came here and lost the 10 in a row? That's, <laughs> hey, man, that's what will be right, happening. Don't right. you worry about that. Every every Rangers fan that goes to Dubai in the next few years on holiday will be giving it big licks about Dubai. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> Brilliant. We'll move on to our special guest, Stuart Keane. Stuart, it's a pleasure to welcome you on to the show. What was your early, early years at Dale like? Obviously coming through and you had a big appearance. You came off the bench in the League Cup final in 2002. Surely that must have been a highlight of your time here. Aye, definitely. When I come through, when I, come through I, I mean, my debut was just no longer 17. At uh, Livingston, um, it was it was at that time here were, were pushing during Bill Barr was they spent a bit of money. Yeah, you had big you had big names at the, at the club at the time, and so you did. And obviously we're pushing for to get tipped the first year was Hibs, then Livingston tipped the next the next year they were they were pushing for it. But coming through, we had the likes of players that were running about you then, like your James Davies. I mean, you were learning off all these people and. Eddie Annans and earlier obviously it was like Glenn Hurst and things. You know, these boys were I was I mean I was only sixteen at the time just coming through and you were training with these and it was good. Do you know I mean it was good to learn from them and experience? And then you end up you get a yeah, we we go to the first team and you're sitting on the bench and it gradually here was good, here was kinda of good for that. Like Campbell Money was a kind of head of youth and we did the right good youth system, so we did because we um we got to the final of the the B, the BP Cup, the BP Rangers. Even when I mean, they did, it's not as if they can kind have of pushed for the youth to come through at that time. Even with the, the squad we had, the amount of players in Gordon Dale, we did. You had to turn to sometimes, do you know what I mean? Uh, but um, it was good to go through, good club. Still, can kind you of watch them as much as you can, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Obviously, it's hard to, to go and uh, watch them as much as you can. But um, I started with them when I was, I think I was 10 when I started there. So I did it was um, Jerry Phillips. Was telling me it was a Miles, 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 Miles,
So he was right, oh. 17 to through and then uh, it was good. And then he obviously got a big move to St. Marin. Like, who was some of the best players you played with in the memories of your, your time there? You did a good spell there. We did, I probably win the league. It was brilliant. I mean, the club was everybody was brilliant. The club, great bunch of boys, great changing them. So it was the changing them was brilliant. So it was, it was just the John Potters, you know, Ian Maxwell and things like that. And obviously, like John Sutton and things like that played up front. And it was just, and then obviously, you're coming through, you get, get to the Premier League a few years there. But it's just the club up there was dead close. Everybody was dead close about it. And so it was, it was good and great time. So it was. And then you have a few spells at Queen of the South, Morton and Stenhouse Muir. Like, how did you find these spells before you went to Hurlford? Um, went to Queen of the South. Obviously, went there kind of after there. They, they just did the cup run. Played Rangers in the final and I went the next year. Yeah. Um, it was good. Good, as I say, good bunch of boys again. Obviously, first started kind of early, early doors, was playing all the time. But then Stephen Dovey just had a streak. So he was, he was incredible. So he was in, so, I mean, to be playing along, see where he went after that. Stephen Dolby was exceptional. His finishing was, was unbelievable. So, it was obviously, uh, could he could at the end, they could have struggled a wee bit. What year and was that, Stuart? What year were you at Queen of the South? See, the year, the year after, the year after the win, the... Who went up that year? Hey? Who went up that year? Patrick Thistle? Uh, St. Johnson, sorry. St. Johnson. I, I was at Dunfermline on loan that year. Just when you're naming these names, I'm like, I was definitely kicking about at that. Uh, we Dunfermline at that point. I... Aye, aye, I was on loan for six months, aye. We were, because we were, we struggled, that, we struggled the first year at Queen's of Kenny. After the cup run, they could have struggled a wee bit. Obviously, it was it's the same again. It's a good club. It's a close club, obviously, a great community club. So it was a good, a good um, board and things like that. But um, obviously, it's Kenny, it was tough after that. And obviously, but we could be running Europe, which was good. Do you know what I mean? We hangs like that for the club. For, for clubs like that, it's brilliant. Do you know what I mean? But aye, it was good in there as well. Yeah, just a quick question. Like, what what was it like when you mentioned touching on Europe? Like, you played against like Norseland. Now, what what was that like? Like, what was the buzz like in the, the, the dressing room like? It was it was Joe. You know, it's quite surreal. Let's be honest. Like, you were never yeah. expecting it. It's quite surreal for a club like that to go and play in Europe or in that. But do you know what? We got a good goal. I remember we had to play the game at um, Airdrie's ground. Aye. So we did because obviously the Palmerston was not up, up to scratch for it. But, um, we had to play it there, and it was torrential weather. The weather. Was, the, the rain was horrific, so it was the game. The game was on. It was, do you know what? It was, it was surreal. We could have a good go at it. We were unlucky to be fair. Yeah. Even when we played across, we were unlucky. So was it not two I, one, two one or something? Because I, I mean, I, what was it like? Like obviously sitting in the dressing room, where you like thinking like, well, I'm like playing your way for a cup here. Like, what was it like? It was as I'm saying. It is. It's quite. You can you pinch yourself. It is quite surreal, right? There's no doubt about it. You never expected to play at, at, at a club like that. To be fair, yeah. But yeah. you know the good, good, the boys done well. So it was, it was, you're sitting there and you're thinking, going, you're on the telly, you're playing the cup, some you're bobbing every day. And it's, oh, I remember Yogi years ago always said, you need to always take these things in, no, so you take these experiences in. Because obviously, Mel's Yogi never played, that was the only cup final Yogi played in. But yeah, mm-hmm. do you know what I mean? It always, it always, that was one thing that always stuck me, always said, you always need to take all these things in. You've got to try and take them on. And so you have. And then your spells at Morlin Stenhouse Muir as well. Was there, was there any highlights for these spells? So they were good spells. I mean, obviously, at Stenhouse, when we went to Stenhouse Muir, it was um, when we went part time, it was a bit different. But it was good, Dave Ireland staying there. Obviously, after went there, I enjoyed it. It was good, a good few years. So it was the um, same again. Great wee club and all. It was, it was a good community, just a good bunch of boys and stuff like that. They were, they were good wee clubs, so they were. And then Hurlford, obviously, your highlight will be winning the Junior Cup in 2014. I was at that game, actually. You are probably the best man in the fight. See, going to junior football, did you did you worry about the, the step to that level for, for playing senior all your days? When I left, when I left Stenhouse Muir, I had, um, had a, a few junior clubs in contact. I had a few senior clubs in contact with me as well. And um, I just came that way. I didn't know what to do. And I phoned, I actually phoned um, Dan Henderson just for a bit of advice. And obviously, I'd seen like, Wally had went talking Lake, Wally Lake had went talking Lake, and things were close with him and stuff like that. He's went talking Lake, and you see how well he's done and stuff like that. And, but I'd, I'd kind of, I grew up with so obviously, you know, the, you know the juniors well. And I played with Craig Mark when I was, I got loaned out to Fair when I was younger. And I, was, I think I was 15 or 16, and I got, I got loaned out to Craig Mark, the one promotion with him. So that, that was brilliant for me, because I was, I was only a young, 
young boy playing against men. Do you mean that's how I can you grew up oatmeal off it? And then um, I went to Cumnock. I didn't I didn't about six months at Cumnock. So right. I did on a Sandy Mac and Right, okay. And then Air put me back in. And then I went, that's when I went and made my debut at Air. So I did um, I knew I knew all the, everybody down here knows about the juniors and stuff, the level it is. And so I obviously spoke to Darren and just got a bit of advice and he's like actually listen, don't do nothing now because he was at Clara at the time. Mm-hmm. So he was like, he was, I'm going to hold I said, I ain't no bother. So I never did nothing. And then he come back and he's like, You went come here for a meeting of time to get the hurdle for a job. I didn't really know much of it to be fair. Whatever, whatever kind of Tuesday night, I think it was, I got signed that night. So it wasn't so it, it's easier to go there because you're going with people you know a wee bit. Nice. Like Darren and things and what they say is and how the, the boys were bringing in. I'm sitting going, you know what? It'll be good. The one thing I did, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed my football when I was at juniors. And one in, one in the cop, obviously, was that the highlight? Aye, without a doubt. I mean, it was a special day. I mean, it's the win of Scotch <laughs> Cup at any level. It's exceptional, do you know what I mean? It's a, it's just one of the days where, and especially, obviously, the situation behind it, the kind of situation aye. and all that kind of stuff. And, but aye, it was brilliant. Exceptional day, to be fair, isn't it? It was good. Brilliant. Every week we, we were special guests. We give Wilson the floor for quite a few questions, and this week we will pass the floor over to Wilson. Right, Stuart. Now right. we've been doing this a, a, a few weeks now, and when we di- when we asked young Rory these questions, we got some big hitters. We're not interested in Craig Martin Bartonian's players. <laughs> we want big <laughs> names, right? So some some of the questions as as heads or tails. It's a choice. But we want quick fire answers. We don't want you saying, "Oh, wait a minute, I think about this." <laughs> we want and we want controversial choices as well. Right? Is that okay? You happy with it. the rules? Right. Nah, go for it. First question: What time did you get back from Ibrox last night? <laughs> 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 no, that was that was for Shanker. Sorry, sorry. Oh, man, that's terrible. That. Here we go. Right. Here we go. Right. Saint Marin or Morton? To Marin. Connor Goldson or Virgil Van Dyke? Van Dyke. Have you ever scored against Daryl Meggett? <laughs> no, I think so. Well, please think back on that. It's something I want to put on Twitter later. <laughs> okay. I might have, I don't know. I need to look. Right. Amy Irons or Davy Irons? <laughs> Davy Irons. <laughs> What's the biggest club in Ayrshire? Yeah, right, we'll stop the recording. We'll just, we'll <laughs> Who's the best manager you've played under? Um, Don't be thinking. I'd probably, I'd probably say uh, team, it's, it's about the Gusby person. That's what I'd go down, brilliant. Who's the worst manager you've played under? Joe, it was the Irvin I left. I struggled. It was um, Mark Roberts. Rob Riley. Rob Riley. No, I never played under Mark. <laughs> I never played on Mato, but it was when Rav Riley and um, who was it? Come in. Sh- uh, sh- what was his name? You're that mad. Oh, was <laughs> <Are you mad? laughs> was, Rab, I mean, was it the bro- Rab Riley and Robert Robert Connor was brilliant at that time. Was it no new one? Rab Riley and Matt Shatland. Matt Shankland, I was, he was a, he worked for Hamilton Aki's, I think that's what he did work for. I was, um, I, and he was at the bus was, as well. Was left. I, they they, 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 they the came bus. in after Campbell. Campbell Money had left. Uh, right, okay. Who's the best strike partner you've played with? I would probably say John Sutton at the time when we won the league. No, Marco, he didn't say you. He said John Sutton. <laughs> I, can't believe it. I can't believe that either. <laughs> right, I'll, I'll just back on. Right, sorry, the interruption now. <laughs> Who's your best friend in football? Probably well, well, Jordan Henderson or Dan Henderson? Oh, I'll need to say Dan Henderson. Best player played with? <sighs> played with Gar- Gary Brady at um, St. Bernard at the time. Right, Do you know what? He, was, he made football look so easy. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Brilliant. He was there when I was here. I was brilliant. He made he he told good. Aye, he did. Aye, he just he just made that little season. He was different class. He was so laid back. Best player played against. 
probably as a Rangers fan and things like that, she likes her. I mean, I hate Amaroos own stuff. Do you know what I mean? It was good. <laughs> cut, cut that one off and I'll pick it. What's the highlight of your football career? When the league was at month, probably. Obviously, then you've got the Scottish Cup, the juniors and stuff like that. And your low light, what was the lowest point? Probably retiring to be fair, you come away for it. Who's the best goalkeeper you scored against? Um, Craig Gordon. That's who Andy I put Saint, Saint Mum at Tyne Castle. Scored against Andy Gordon as well when he was at Queens. Nah, Craig Gordon's better than him, don't worry about that. <laughs> I cannot believe you went with Craig Go- Gordon over Andy Gordon. That's outrageous. Craig, Craig, Craig Gordon's yeah, better than Andy Gordon. Andy Andy Gordon. Stinker. 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 played four good games a season. He was rubbish the rest of the time. <laughs> 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 it, it, it's good because you've obviously been to juniors as well a player you played with that didn't make the dizzy heights of professional football or a higher level as such so you mentioned like Gary Brady could Gary Brady have played at a Celtic or a Rangers you know that type of thing somebody you thought they'll play at a higher level and didn't quite make it um, when I came to juniors and obviously we boy Taz I I at um, at Horford, do you know he would he could have easily clubs clubs would have loved him just because of the way he plays. He's a hundred percent every game. And see, likes he was a big air fan, and see, likes a see, likes a air or somebody air, back maybe obviously I'm talking five years ago. See, air, air sitting in a big gamble. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The fans would have loved him. He would he was hundred percent a local boy. But so I probably boys like that. He he, he would have probably. He was different class, obviously, so he was. Aye. Who's the worst player you've played with? <laughs> I don't know. Stitch somebody up. That's a tough one. Rory, Rory, Rory said know. Barry Ferguson at Rangers when he was there, so don't be too controversial. Yes, he was. <laughs> Go, Matt, push out. Go Matt Roberts. Right, superb. <laughs> and who's the worst player you've played against? Was there a centre-half you always scored against that team because he was playing against you? No, nah, not really. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say it was Andy. Nah, not really. Oh, oh, we'll have to think. We want a name. Oh, Come one. on, for... In all in all the dressing rooms you've been in, who's got the best part? Um, we boy Van Zanten. It's the mum who's good laugh. Nah, we Vansy. Just because Charlie Richmond tunes in, who's the worst referee you've seen? Or have been involved with? Um, Charlie was alright, to be fair. Um, I don't know. Some, some of the junior ones were terrible. <laughs> honestly, some of them were honestly it was so bad. And you just, you just can't talk to them. There's no, obviously, you watch the Rangers. I watched the Rangers game the other night there, but it's, that's a tough thing. See, they, they can't communicate with them. They just get this chip in their shoulder sometimes, but. Some of them are brilliant. I mean, obviously, when I come through at the start, you, you, you're Wally Youngs and stuff, but they, they talk to you through the game. They weren't a laugh at you. Do you know what I mean? a bit of banter you during the game sometimes, but I, some of the junior referees were, were poor. And last one, which team do you hate the most? Well, my Rangers fans, I think they say Celtic. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair. Well, I appreciate it. I was, I was expecting Kelly there, Kelly? to be honest. No, no, how good you were at air, but um, no, that's fine. Thanks very much for answering them, Stuart. That's, that's good. Brilliant. <laughs> Rory, you to add? Just want to know who the worst player he's played against us. <laughs> Did he play against you at Dunfermline? <laughs> Quite possibly, I. <laughs> no, the, the one, the one, sorry. <laughs> we'll, we'll, let, see, let, let, him, let him answer Rory's question. I've got a wee question for him. Worst player I've played, played with? Against. Against. Nah, against just, him. It was just Wilson's. What's this question? No, I would say, do you think, what I would ask is, having played in the championship back then and looking at the championship now, out with your, maybe your hearts, would you say that the, the standard of the championship back then was, I know it was Division 1 back then, was, was stronger and tougher? Because I would say, looking back at my time, compared to when I came back up the road, maybe I was more developed, but I think looking back, you know, the, the, the first division at that point in time was a really strong league. I would say so. I mean, when I came to air at first, and they, even you look at the crowds we were getting back then, too, Aye. Somerset and things like that, 
and some of the teams and because you get Pibs, you get Livingston's and obviously back then you obviously get to get great and some of the players I was definitely I would say a stronger league. So it was yeah, see as well, just on that wee question, what would you say the best ground you've played at is? Like with the best best park? Um obviously you'd be your big ones, the Ibrox and things like that, but see atmosphere wise, see at Pink Castle. Everybody says wow, that. Lots of players say that, don't they? So that it was good. Uh, it was quite a because they closed in. So quite, you're really close. Aye, it was. It was probably a good atmosphere. Obviously, because I scored the winner there, it makes a difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we've got time for a few fan questions as well. I've been keen to ask this all week. There was a a story coming out on Tuesday regarding a potential recruit, somebody who could potentially been lined for the Celtic job. Wilson, I'll throw this to you. Do you think Henrik Larson could be the man to rescue Celtic? No. Abs- absolutely not. I don't know if, if the viewers may have seen this on Tuesday night. There was a guy on Super Scoreboard claiming that Henrik Larson was in the frame. And can I took a, a week and I think took off for there on Tuesday night that Henrik Larson could be the man. Like, see what a player like Henrik Larson get into it if he was to be the Celtic, go into the Celtic manager would. If it went wrong, would that kind of put him off if a job like that, if he gets it wrong, kind of damaging his reputation at the club going I've spoken quite passionately passionately on this show about ex players just walking into jobs at especially clubs that size. It's no for me. I think you need to you need to earn it, you need to go out and you need to do a good job at a different club. I think as as I've said previously on this show, if Henrik Larson got the Celtic job, I don't think it would be a concern damaging damaging his reputation because at the end of the day, players at that level don't think like that. All he'll be thinking about is probably he's got a chance to enhance it. He's got a chance to go on and win trophies and, and move on again. That's the type of mentality these guys have. He's played with Barcelona and Man United. and um, So I, I don't think for a second his concern would be that he would come and damage his reputation. If that was the case, I don't think he would put himself forward. I don't, so, no, I don't think he would worry about that. But in terms of him being the right man for the job, um, I, I really don't think so. I know when me and Wilson have, have debated on this before and he, he's picking ex-players out of obscurity to take top-flight jobs, it's just not something I agree with. Well, I, I was just, 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 just a point on that. Right? We had a, a, a discussion, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, and as a student will be able to help us in this as well, there's obviously some guys that are better managers and not coaches and there's some guys that are better coaches, but they're not managers, right? Now, I'm looking at it from an outsider's point of view. Henrik Larson has been brought in as a number two at Barcelona to Koeman. Is Henrik Larson taking training every day, or is he learning his trade to be a manager, or is he being a coach? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you're, so you're thinking, why, why, would he, why, why would you think as a number two, if he's more coaching side, would he walk straight into the biggest club in the world as, as a number one? I, I think that, see, see when it comes, I think it, it, it takes a degree of natural talent to be a good manager, in my opinion. There's things in there and there's skill sets in there that you can't really teach. I think you can develop and become a really good coach. I think like, and I think that's where a lot of ex-footballers go wrong, and that's where these appointments go wrong. And there's there's, a, there's obviously um, uh, exceptions to the rule where ex-footballers do well in management. But to answer your question, I don't think you can go in and learn to be a manager. I think I think that's something you need to have, um, and I think that's why a lot of ex-footballers fail because they don't have it's a totally different skill set to being a player, and you can't manage people well enough. Um, but as a coach, I think that. Having spent the time in the game that Larson has, there's no doubt in, in my mind he could be an exceptional coach based on the experience he has and if he if he works hard and whatever else and puts his, his efforts into that side of the game. But there's got to be a degree of, of question above whether he can manage or not because he's never done that before. And you can't just be a good manager because you were a good player. And I think that's where a lot of people get it wrong. And even having done the A licence before, I think being on that course, it's an unbelievably in-depth course, but you're on the pitch all the time. There's no a lot of Right, this is how you manage people. This is how you do And, you know, the A licence gets you the opportunity to manage at the highest level in the domestic game where I'm looking at that going, well, where I need to improve in terms of if I was to go into a job or do whatever else, and I'm going, well, managing people and things, I could take a training session. Can I'm sure Henrik Larson could take a training session. Could he deal with uh, Messi and banging on his door and saying, why am I no... Well, obviously Messi would play, or I've got this problem, or why is he playing... No, you need experience for that and you need to have shown that you've done it at a good level to be able to go in and take one of these jobs. 
Aye. It means, I think Hen- Henrik Larson is, is a season ticket seller, you know? That's that's the way I would look at it. That's, um, that, that's what I think that it came from. Well, a, a, big, a bigger problem for me, that I think if you're going down the route of an ex-player, then they're looking at keeping the likes of Kennedy, Strachan and Woods all on board. You know, because I think we'll be oh, did you, John Kennedy was here when you were a player and blah 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 blah. And as I said at the time, and I'm, I, I think we come up with Walter Smith, probably the only guy that I've seen as a number two that's been and been an unbelievable number one. You know, I mean, I'm sure there, there is others, but I just off the top of my head. And I, again, I don't think Celtic can go and pluck Henrik Larson from Barcelona and be told and be told by the way John Kenny's your number two Gavin's number three McManus is four whatever and Steve Woods your goalkeeping coach because they were all culpable at the part of the problem this season mm. and I always believe a manager should be trusted to bring in their own team maybe not physios and sports scientists that kind of generic but their own coaches and people that they trust I, would, I, you, I would you say sorry. Wilson that so we'd have to go down the route like with Gerard and the Rangers like how Gerard brought in like Michael, Michael Beale for Liverpool Jordan Wilson, do you say they'd have to bring in like a full, maybe yeah, yeah. six people, not just like a, the main man, they've got to bring in five people back, like behind the scenes to come in with them, so you guys just maybe say for instance Celtic go for Martinez and Sean Maloney if, if it was the thing like the case, like say for example would you still keep Kennedy or would you go for like more backroom staff? No but it should be given to Roberto Martinez to decide who he wants in. Now, again, if if the rumours are true or whatever happens, and inevitably probably in the next few years, if Steven Gerrard goes to get or gets a Liverpool job, you're not telling me he's not taking Gary McCaster, Michael Beale, the other fella, and Colin Stewart with him. I of would say yes. more that this more the, the past two years, it's mostly been the likes of Michael Beale. Is the orchestrating everything? Oh, but that, but that's fine. That's part of the management team. I you would know, say the greatest same. respect. Michael Beale is obviously a wonderful coach. Yeah, Michael Beale walking into Liverpool dressing room, feel about like that. Stephen no. Gerrard walks into that dressing room and they're all sitting on the primary ones. You know, Aye. and that's I why would... it's a, that's why it's a management team. Yeah, you know, there's coaches in there. There's someone that can manage players, obviously, and and they've brought success. Uh, you know, and that's why I'm saying now, again, the, Cel- the Celtic performances under Neil Lennon, and I know it's, he said one or two games, but it was the exact same performances that John Kennedy's produced in the last couple of games. It, it needs a whole change, and you need to be trusted, you know. So if Stuart and Rory manage Stenhouse Muir for five years and they're brilliant, manage Partick for 10 years and they're brilliant, offer the Rangers job, and Stuart's told you, you can't bring Rory because you're going to have to have Peter Lovenkrantz, who's been here the last 25 years. Yeah. That makes sense. So, see, going back to when you, is Rory. when you mentioned about Lennon, like obviously, when would you have said as a time scale? When when do you think like, Lennon's obviously walked? When would you think Lennon should have walked then? After the first old firm defeat. You think? Yes. And I'll tell you why. Because you could tell by the attitude and the performance that was that there was something wrong. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it might have been a bit knee jerk. However, when you looked at the opportunities that Celtic had, because in between October and January, there was two fortnight breaks for internationals. So Celtic could have got someone in, had a wee look at what they've got for a couple of weeks. Results may not have improved. We don't know, right? The question there was, should he have walked? Though? Not should he, like, he should, I don't blame the guy for the walk. That's his job at the end of the day. We're not walking oh, away from oh, a contract. Oh, we oh, have. Well, sorry. He should have been the, sacked after the old firm game. He should have been sacked. Aye. If I was in a four million pound year contract, I wouldn't be walking either. Load, well, <laughs> away, away for the money, there's a, away for the money. There's a lot of people who who sit here and say, "Oh, you know, Lennon should have walked. You know, he, you know, he, he should be leaving. He should be off walking off his own back and all the rest of it." And go go back to to what I said about Larson. The guys at this level believe and that they can turn these things around. They're not going to walk away, and it's nothing today. No, not necessarily today with the money. He wants to regain respect. And I think it's re- the type of guy Lennon actually is. Like he's been there as a player. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's been as a player. Everybody, everybody at that level, but you can't blame the guy for no walking but he, away. He, 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 he must, but he must have seen through performances that he was getting nothing out of these guys. You know, he, and I, 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 the Simon game said it all, really. Like, he hung the players at the dry, he said that was the lowest he's felt. He hung the players out every week. And, 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 and to be fair, before I think he was entitled to yeah. yeah. it. Look, look, Wilson, you rewind, you rewind to the start of last season or midway through last season. Listen to some of Gerald's interviews, by the way. 
listen to some of the Gerrard interviews and listen listen to some of the criticism he gave his players. It's no it's not quite on the same level, but it's no far away. Right, but, but he Gerard gets an got, exception. He Gerard just got, got a response. Own, right? Gerard got a response quickly. Lennon get nothing. No, he, he never. Did. No, he never. They went on and they finished thirteen points behind Celtic. That's what they did. Well, that, was, that was after. That was after what they were up to in Dubai. <laughs> Look, it, it, it stands to reason, though. Um, you know, Lennon's approach was a little bit in, on reflection. I think he'll look back and go, "I shouldn't have done that." But Gerard did do that, and things didn't they pick up. It was this season. Uh, sorry, I thought you meant this. Sorry, I thought you were talking about this season. But what I'm saying, well, going back to this, this season, I, I thought you said this season. Going back, no. going back to, to Mark's question, though, and then Celtic had the full month of January to get someone in and new players because it was obvious there was a, there was an absolute rot setting in, you know. And again, I, I, going back to Rory's point about Gerard the previous year, again, I think Morelos was promised a decent move and it didn't happen, and it started a wee problem within the camp. That's when the likes of obviously. Like that's Morelos, why they felt guilty bits. I think there was a dressing room issue. Uh, you know, Morelos but, was in the brink of going, but, but then obviously that's when they brought in Eaton and then they brought in obviously Roof, like as direct replacements for him. They obviously thought, right, hold on a minute, it's not the, the move deteriorated. Well, it's, hmm? do you know what I mean? It's, it's fell through, so obviously. But I know, I know what you mean, hundred percent. When you've, when you've, and uh, uh, you two are possibly involved in this, when. You've lost the dressing room as a coach or a manager. There's only one winner. Nah. You know, it's player player power. That's what it is nowadays. It's player power. And as I say, there was something. I mean, and how 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 many things in the media have you? How many Celtic players have come out and said that was your fault? Neil Lennon gets sacked. We were terrible. We were this. We miss our manager. We feel sorry for him. No, I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't. Absolutely none. I don't know. Did, that. did Scott Brown not come out the other week and say it was the players' fault? He's, he's club captain doing a soundbite for the for the Sky Sports. He can't string two words together, that man. He's lost a plot, him. Even though I love him. Anyway. But right. We've got we've got another question as well. And we'll throw this to everybody. We'll bring Wilson in this as well. This completes the end of a 10-year journey for Rangers. What is your favourite memory from the 10 years? And what is your weirdest memory for the 10 years as a Rangers fan? I'll throw this to you as well, Wilson, because you must you must have followed Rangers a lot in those 10 years. We'll give it to Stuart. Uh, What's your best memory from the 10 years since Rangers were relegated? All of the day, to be honest with you. All of the day. It's been aye. It's been, been, it's been a long 10 years. It's been right tough, but I'd probably get another line, to be fair to you. Don't get me wrong. It was inevitable. It was going to be happening. It's just getting across that line. I think obviously it's a day, I would say that. Yeah, definitely. Mark, Cleland, what's your favourite memory from the 10 years and your weirdest memory from the 10 years? Weirdest memory. I, there's a few actually. As I said earlier on in the show, Michael Chopper making his Alaba debut was was up there. <laughs> uh, the Hearts game you touched upon when you stood inside the Irish team, like wee boys chunking snowballs at the board. That was that was up there. But the day is just it's just dicing in the cake. And I mean, it's ten long years. It's it's long overdue. It's it's speechless me. This it's just it's, it's words can't describe how. How Rangers fans feel just now. It's just, I don't get, as I said earlier on, it'll not sink into you. I should see like Tavernier lifting the trophy. But it's just, there's, I did never, nobody ever thought we would have, we got this far. Do you know what I mean? Nobody thought we'd have been unbeaten in the league, we'd have been unbeaten in Europe, winning the league title for 55. But it's just icing in the cake. Rory, what's your best memory and your weirdest memory for the 10 years since Rangers last won the title? Um, I enjoyed the semi-final against Celtic under Warburton. Um, it was a bit of a false dawn because they played so well that day. And I think at that point in time, everyone thought, right, this is the start of stopping the 10. And like I said, there was a few false dawns along the way, but that was definitely a highlight. They played some great stuff that day and a couple of great goals as well. Um, obviously, went on to lose the final, which was which was disappointing from a Rangers point of view. But um, that, was probably my, <laughs> that was probably my highlight. But... Um, when we when I was at Carlisle, we story about when Rangers went down the divisions. When I was at Carlisle, we used to go up and train at Anne in the odd time on their pitch. And the manager Greg Abbott at the time was um, he would chat to everybody. He was a good, really good guy, and he said he was chop, uh, chatting to one of the the guys who ran the local pub when he was up uh, at the side of the training pitch one day. The guy was watching his train, and the guy had said that he was going to be gutted to see Rangers get promoted because he'd sold uh, he'd made made income on that one day that Rangers had played on a Saturday down at Annan they had for the entire previous year. So. 
I think the I think I think the impact it had on on different people as well up and down the country. That was quite a weird thing to hear that you know or Peter Head or Annan or Stranraer, wherever they go, these these businesses are all booming because Rangers are, are visiting. And I think it just goes to show as well when these cup draws are made, it's not just the Fitter fans that are celebrating. It's 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 the whole place. The roll shops and the fish and chips. That's you know what I mean. It's the wee shops as you mentioned. They they take the the buzz out of it. Like uh, the the Stranraer said they wouldn't have survived. If they didn't get Rangers in the cup last year. Uh, Wilson, you're a neutral of the Scottish game. What is your favourite? <laughs> what is your favourite? I don't, I, don't, I don't see why these three are laughing at when they say that, Scott, to be honest. <laughs> what is um, your favourite memory from the 10 years as a neutral watching Rangers and what is the weirdest well, I, as, as it, I mean, David Gray's header was unbelievable. That, that was a smashing, <laughs> a smashing day for the neutral. Um, what what I would say is I'm a wee bit of a of a obviously Scotland is, is is my is my team as such, but I always felt I would have liked the success when we were coming through the divisions to fall on the likes of Ali McCall, Easton Stuart McCall when, when they guys were the manager. And as much as you know, obviously I'm a, I'm a neutral um, and Ali Ali played for Comanlet as well, but. Alan McCoy, Stuart McCall were unbelievable footballers and unbelievable for their club and their country. So as, as they kind of progress through the leagues, and I know managers have to cut their teeth, you know, and I'm I used I used to, obviously I used to look at it and I would look at Ali McCoy, Stanin Duran, and Jim Stewart, and, and they were working with guys that couldn't even have the ability to clean their boots, probably, and trying to coach them. And I know they have to cut their teeth, as I said. Um I mean, but when they went through the divisions and to bring a wee bit of success, I would have liked that to be Nally McCoy or Stuart McCall that was lifting that league. I know Gerard's to get all the credit, but I would have liked someone of that out to be lifting that league trophy um, rather than not necessarily not, nothing against Stephen Gerard, but you know, a wee bit of an old romantic that these guys deserved a wee bit because they all played their part in what's went on. And even, they know, even did the McCoy still finish second in the championship? Is that no McCoy? I, I, I know, I know, I know. How could we have him left in the Premier League title when he can't even win the championship? Oh, well, he lifted it lots of times as a player, to be fair. Um, I but I know, but I would, I would, that's what I'm saying. I would have liked, I would have liked him if the success was coming and you couldn't stop it. Then I would, have, I would have liked it to fail on you know, Alan McCoy, or Stuart McCall's shoulders. You know, what's your, highlight, me, what's your favourite part of Rangers top ten in a row? What's your highlight of it? That was the question. What did that, you enjoy the most? What did I enjoy the most? Yeah. Um, from this season, just from from Rangers being being champions. Um, well, as much as I mean, don't get me wrong, my favourite European team, Slavia Prague. But as much, <laughs> as much, as much as they've done, they've 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 done well for the coefficient for the Scottish teams in Europe this year. I think that's been and like, don't get me wrong, as you, and you've seen the social media stuff and. You know, I've been sitting with Benfica strips on, and but you, you can't fail not to be impressed with the results they've produced in Europe. You know, and it's not, and again, it's not been the case of a last minute penalty through Bobby Madden or, you know, any of these things. They've they've been out there and played it, and they were they were unlucky and playing big teams in Europe. So it's what they've done for their coefficient, and I, I tell you this, and this again, I think Stephen Gerrard's footballing brain just might be slightly better than mine. <laughs> I think Rangers now could be resting a lot of these guys and now concentrate on the Europa League. You know, I think the likes of, you know, I, I know Tavernier's injured now, but, you know, get the boy Nathan Patterson playing because Scotland's the right back for these Euros, let me tell you. You know, get these young guys playing, you know, in the league games that mean nothing against Hibs and Aberdeen and the other top six teams and start focusing on, you know, Slavia Prague for the next couple of weeks. See where that takes them because that's not a, it's it's a tough tie, but it's not an impossible tie. No. No. So I, again, Rangers progress in Europe after Kelly let them down this coefficient a couple of years ago. <laughs> Do you just um, a quick question for Stuart and Rory? Just we've got a wee, like I've got a group chat with my pals at Rangers fans. Like, who would you say if you like the third division to probably be now? Who's the worst Rangers player you've seen throughout <laughs> that time? Vance and Daza. That's hundred <laughs> percent the answer <laughs> I was looking for. <laughs> Definitely. John Daly, by the way, John Daly must be up there. They, t- they actually went to the they, they went to the extremes of stitching John uh, Franz Andaza up so they could get him. <laughs> <laughs> the taxi driver, the MLS call. They go, Alex Ray, you phone him. 
No, but on, ten no. bags a week, they carry on straight. In all honesty, who who would you say, Stuart? Who would you say is the worst player you've seen at Ibrooks throughout that ten year period? It'd probably be your Sintas and stuff like that. Do you mean it's Aye. And then again, the Rangers they, they sign them, they're playing for a big club. Do you mean Aye. it's they're not there for any reason, but obviously it's I probably see some dads I don't know. Aye. Aye, that and sounds like I was actually looking home for, but a lot of my pals and stuff they would say like Ian Black, but like I've Rangers, Ian Black, Ian Black. Ian Black written down. Would you honestly oh. Ian Black on the back was like played in a Scottish Cup final? I thought Ian Black was alright at hearts. Joey yeah. Barton. I can't have Ian Black. Uh, nah, I just I've got hit there's history with Ian Black, but I'll go get into it. Joey, Joey, <laughs> Joey Barton must be right up there. Joey Barton was he didn't get started. The kit that Barton, tackle Joey for Barton. Kelly. Shane I, I, I tell you that as well. Another another unbelievable player that was rubbish at Rangers, Crancher. Hey, Crancher was injured, to be fair. The, the Joey Barton one, in terms of what was expected of him, the level he's played at, and you know, obviously you can't compare him to Franz Sandaza, but the expectation and what people expected, Joey Barton's probably a no bad shout. If you take and if you take off your um, blue glasses. Andy Hardy was not great at Rangers. I think he's a good player. And I, 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 think, I think he'll do well at Hearts. I think he'd be Kelly's best. If you play for Kelly, he'd be Kelly's best player. But these games for Rangers, and I know it was a tough time. You know, he, um, does not, he does not fall into the category of no, worst player during no, that time. Yeah. Oh, he filled in at left back a few times and he came in and played in a good few games. There's no way he falls into the fan Sandaza category. No chance. Mm. Uh, Halliday was a badge kisser. That's... Ah, of course he was like that Jonovo as well. Oh, we Limit, limited ability, but kiss the badge. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's what he did as well. So, so, what, so as, go back to Stuart and Rory, so you would probably both agree on that Sandaz is probably the worst. The first one that came into my head, so aye. I was the same. That's when I asked the boys in the group chat, we always talk about who gives you the best, like the biggest fear or haunt you for the Emerson, the Emerson Krabari. That, no, no, no. The boy, the boy that came, it was for Cyprus who played right back. I give you, I am. He was, oh, uh, I don't even remember these guys. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, Ice you were quite probably interested me in Rangers then. You were, but like, no. Don't watch pub leagues, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be but, watching them next year, but I'll know, know this. Know the last I, I them, <laughs> <laughs> but that will wrap up the show at that point. I just want to say as well to Stuart, our special guest, it's been an absolute pleasure to be on the show. Thanks very much. Thanks very much for having us. Enjoyed it. Brilliant. As well as that, I just want to say to every Rangers fan, soak in this for what it is. It's been. Worth the 10 years, enjoy it while <laughs> you can. And Wilson, Mark, and Rory, it's been an absolute pleasure as always. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks, Thanks Scott. Superb. Thanks very much for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Cheers. <laughs>